The war classic turns 25 this year. In 1998, Steven Spielberg directed Saving Private Ryan, which set a new standard for modern war films over a decade after Oliver Stone's Platoon in 1986. The movie featured a sweeping blend of visceral action sequences, including the iconic opening scene depicting American troops storming Omaha Beach in 1941 and developed a cast of thoughtful and complex characters played by Tom Hanks, Tom Sizemore, and Edward Burns. Saving Private Ryan instantly became the new benchmark for war movies, and almost every subsequent film in the genre owes a debt of gratitude to Spielberg and his team for creating the blueprint for cutting-edge wartime cinema. Over the last 25 years, there have been several exceptional films about the harsh realities of war, such as Black Hawk Down, Dunkirk, 1917, and Hacksaw Ridge, each of which has been influenced by Spielberg's groundbreaking work. Saving Private Ryan strips war of any romantic glory. What Spielberg and acclaimed cinematographer Janusz Kaminski, Schindler's List, Amistad, pulled off with Saving Private Ryan was nothing short of spectacular. Forget that it was one of the most commercially successful war films ever made raking in close to half a billion dollars, yes, billions with a B, worldwide. That was just a byproduct of all the things that he, along with his cast and crew, were able to deliver from the moment the movie starts. The 25-minute storming of the beaches at Normandy during World War II is the most intense and compelling battlefield footage that has ever made its way to the big screen. The nightmarish events of the D-Day assault are so incredibly hellish that any romantic notions you may have had about the glory of war should have been dashed and put to rest for good. From gruesome disembowelment to gory dismemberment to the shell shock of a salty soldier and the film's lead, Captain John H. Miller, Hanks, amid all the blood-soaked upheaval, sitting in the theater for that half an hour is something all who saw it will never forget. It is still the closest we have ever been taken to a battlefield that those of us who have not served will ever experience. Most of us needed a breather afterward, and Spielberg deftly brought our blood pressure down just enough to establish a splendid and diverse group of soldiers assigned to retrieve Private James Ryan, Matt Damon, who is the only survivor in a family that includes three brothers who have all been killed in action. Along the way, he continues to add layers to the players to make sure that he has complete control of our emotions throughout. It's the kind of exhilarating thrill ride and art form that we celebrate and pay so handsomely to enjoy. Black Hawk Down borrowed Saving Private Ryan's plot devices. In 2001, the film Black Hawk Down depicted the United States military's ill-fated decision to send troops into Somalia, a country torn apart by warlords, to destabilize the already fragile situation in the city of Mogadishu in 1993. This film was one of many war movies that followed in the decades after Saving Private Ryan and was heavily influenced by it. Despite the vastly different situations portrayed in each film, director Ridley Scott was able to take a page out of Spielberg's playbook by dedicating the first 40 minutes of Black Hawk Down to delving into the backstories of the soldiers and pilots involved in the conflict. After saving Private Ryan, war movies no longer had to choose between thrilling action sequences or in-depth character studies. Spielberg showed that it was possible to have both, with intense gunfire exchanges during battle scenes and emotive characters that the audience cared about beyond just their uniform. In Black Hawk Down, taking the time to introduce key players such as SSG Matt Eversman, played by Josh Hartnett, SPC John Grimes, Ewan McGregor, and LTC Danny McKnight, once again portrayed by Tom Sizemore, increased our emotional investment in the film and made the experience more relatable. The firefights that take place in the streets of Mogadishu are even more impactful when we care about the men behind the guns in the midst of the chaos. This emotional investment is what makes the scene where Hartnett's character assists in an improvised open surgery on a dying soldier so heartbreaking. Dunkirk followed Saving Private Ryan's cinematography style. One of the finest aspects of Saving Private Ryan is that from the first second of the first scene of the film, we are completely immersed in the American involvement in World War II. The fear on the faces of the young men on those boats is so palpable, you can almost taste it. 
One soldier is riddled with angst, another prays, and a third vomits from the almost blinding terror of what they're about to experience. Dunkirk follows the story of the bloody battle on the northern French shores that left hundreds of stranded British troops to die. Acclaimed writer-slash-filmmaker Christopher Nolan crafts well-written characters who are heading into a battle they've already lost, but you see Ryan's influence more in the outstanding if not more waterlogged cinematography. Spielberg had already shown Nolan and his cinematographer Hoyt Van Hoytema, Ad Astra, Nope, how to optimize the use of a beach-line battlefield for the cinema. And while Nolan gets full credit for adding some of his stylized and dizzying aerial shots that we've seen in his Dark Knight films and Interstellar that were specifically shot for IMAX viewing, the bloodied bodies on the beach and attacks on the approaching boats carrying terrified soldiers have saving Private Ryan's signature all over it. And by the time this project hit theaters in 2017, we were already expecting a marriage of character development and majestic shooting because we had seen it 20 years prior. All told, Dunkirk is one of Ryan's most worthy protégés detailing the British efforts in the war. 1917 raised the bar for how war movies should look. The thing about the 2019 Sam Mendes film 1917 is that it parallels Saving Private Ryan in a far more subtle way while using some of the best camera and visual effects work in the history of cinema. While Spielberg's film opens with its seminal beach siege, 1917's spectacular battlefield sequence occurs at the movie's end. The first act is built on the dizzying, indefatigably long single takes that go on forever without a single hitch. The second half of the film is a masterclass in visual effects by cinematographer Roger Deakins, one of, if not the greatest working today, as night turns into the following morning. Visual effects gurus Guillaume Rochran, Greg Butler, and Dominic Tui's brilliant use of various natural and filtered synthetic light sources work in seamless harmony. They all took home Oscars for their work and if you've seen the film, you can't help but feel like if Kaminsky hadn't accomplished what he did with Saving Private Ryan, 1917 wouldn't have been such a visually exceptional movie. At the end of its two-hour runtime, you are as exhausted as Lance Corporal Schofield, Roger McKay, but delightfully so. Hacksaw Ridge is just as grisly as Saving Private Ryan. It was set in a country almost half the way around the world, but the siege to take the Japanese stronghold Hacksaw Ridge in the Battle of Okinawa during World War II has got some of the same grisly battlefield footage. The 2016 film starring Andrew Garfield as conscientious objector Private First Class Desmond Doss, who refused to carry a gun because of his religious beliefs, but still saved 75 men from the jaws of certain death as they lay bloodied and dying on the battlefield, is every bit as gruesome as saving Private Ryan. You can see director Mel Gibson and his cinematographer Simon Duggan, who will be working with George Miller on Furiosa, employ a lot of the same camera lines and rotating points of view as Spielberg and Kaminsky did to get us in the middle of the destruction on the beaches of Normandy in the film that is still influencing the way we experience the modern war film as we near its 25th anniversary in July.